Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. I want to dive into a conversation that we've been having quite frequently the past year, it seems like. And that is, why would anyone want to sell and buy in a higher interest rate environment? Uh, especially if rates are higher than what somebody may currently have on a fixed interest rate loan. Uh, but for, before we dive into that, I want to read you a recent testimonial that come in uh, from Ashley. This is the third time that I've worked with Jason and I wouldn't go anywhere else. He is very thorough and truly helps you get the best for your needs and wants. We have bought two houses and sold one with this realtor and it was a great experience. Um, Thanks, Ashley. First of all, thank you, Ashley, for that, number one. Number two, you can find that testimonial on our Google review page for the wyomingforsale.net. Uh, that's where she dropped that at for us. Um, and that is true. All that's true. I've, I've worked for her and her family three separate times. Two, what was it? Two buying and one selling. Yeah, so... Anyway, that's they've and a tremendous success story. The the wealth wealth building that we've gone through, and uh, kind of the ebbs and flows of working through being, you know, investing in yourself and and uh, using the home as a a tool to get from, you know, maybe this isn't what we wanted to begin with, but we're going to use it, and then we're going to get to here where we are more happy. So. They stair stepped up and did an excellent job and, and timed their decisions very well. Uh, anyway, back to the topic at hand. Uh, you're wondering why anyone would want to uh, sell and buy with the higher interest rates in this higher interest rate environment. Well, here's a few good reasons that we typically come across, uh, all of which you may find applies to you or someone that you may know. Uh, now remember, this only applies to those of us that have mortgages against our properties. Uh, cash buyers and cash sellers aren't so subject to, to the interest rate environment, obviously. Uh, they're actually more nimble uh, and are less suppressed. And they can actually afford to pay more for a property than those that are getting a mortgage. Uh, meaning they can pay more. Uh, and they're actually paying less in the end because they're never uh, paying any interest on, on the mortgage as they move through time. So uh, that's, you know, we see cash buyers in the market uh, and you may wonder, you know, why they would want to afford that or pay for that for certain properties because they know in the end they're actually paying less even though they paid the original seller more. Um, and the that's just as a buyer you know if you're a buyer that has a mortgage or has to get a mortgage to buy you just have to learn to compete with that and obviously we have a program for you that's uh, we'll coach you on there's more to negotiate than just the sales price uh, and that's to help you uh, compete with cash buyers or certain things in the marketplace that aren't always so easily navigated through um, but anyway back to uh, kind of what we're going to cover here today uh, Reasons why you see some folks and I'm not saying these are all the reasons I'm just saying this is the most popular that we run into uh, Why they're selling in a higher interest rate environment and then turn around and buying uh, Disputes with neighbors uh, We don't always get along with our neighbors uh, Maybe you know how they live their lifestyle. Maybe you know I the one my pet peeve is always the barking dogs like the neighbors always their dogs are always worse than what they want to admit uh, so you have that could be a dispute over property lines uh, any number of reasons could cause a dispute between neighbors uh, so we see that being a driving factor in the marketplace uh, change in job status uh, you may have gotten a pay raise you may have had to suffer a pay cut. Uh, the pay raise, you may be able to move up and afford something more expensive 
if you got the pay cut, obviously your lifestyle is going to you know, be downsized. Therefore, you may be forced into downsizing a home or getting rid of some things that you thought you needed but are more so wants now. Uh, or you change locations. Uh, you know, employee, employers offer relocation packages, especially big corporations. Uh, so we see those folks, uh, you know, there's some benefit moving, you know, laterally or up to scale within a within their company that they work for, um, all of which may cause them to change locations. Uh, next on my list would be injury or medical debt. Uh, this is something we can't predict. Uh, you and I both know we could go out and get on the road today and, and get into a car wreck. Uh, we may suffer an accident of some kind that was unpredictable, unforeseen, and uh, it's just part of life. Like, we have to deal with it. Uh, and that may cause some medical debt, uh, may cause some financial suffering of some kind, all of which you may want to choose to downsize and uh, kind of satisfy or relieve that suffering and, uh, and then move on with life. Uh, next, children left the house, or their you know, familial states changing, and you know every day our children get older. At some point, they move away, um, or move at least move out of the house. Um, so, which you you may not want the same house that you currently have, and you're downsizing. Therefore, you're gonna you're gonna sell and, and buy something a little smaller, and maybe moving down in price ranges. Um, the growing families, you know, there's every day there's families that are growing. Uh, they, they have more children. Uh, they adopt some children. Uh, they may inherited some children in some fashion, all of which need more space. So you, you know, in that instance, you might be moving up and uh, needing more square footage to accommodate the the familial state there uh, with your family, and uh, you know, providing providing a roof over their head that, that you desire or wish that they, they would have. Uh, next, parents moving in. Avoiding the all uh, the all time extreme of the cost of assisted living. Uh, every day the cost of assisted living is going up. It, it is not going down. So to curb that or uh, kind of a, a life hack if you will, um, maybe the parents are moving in with you. And uh, you're going to take care of your parents as long as you can uh, to avoid that expense of assisted living or full-time living, full-time assisted living, or whatever um, your, fam your family may be faced with. Uh, you know, we see that uh, more and more where the children are accepting the parents into their houses and, and taking care of them, all of which, again, they need more square footage. Uh, debt consolidation. Um, it's unfortunate, but debt is a real factor in our world. And uh, if you let that credit card debt get a hold of you, or you got some student loan debt that's starting to catch up with you, or uh, you know maybe you thought you could afford that car or two car payments or something, and and all of a sudden you know especially if there's a change in job status, <laughs> back to that. You know, all of a sudden, what you think yesterday you could afford, you know, all of a sudden tomorrow doesn't look the same. And uh, again, those are unfortunate situations, but you may need to consolidate debt or, or rid of debt. You know, if you're going to rid of it, you're going to sell, rid of the debt, and then buy what you can afford based on your debt to income ratios after those debts are paid for, right? Um, and, and two, you could do this on a refinance, obviously. We just did a video on that about a week ago. But, um, you know, these, these things are all real factors and, and something all, all families, well, not all 100% of families, but a good majority of families um, may face at any given point in time. And uh, yeah, you just have to, to use the, your home or your real estate uh, the best you can to help get out of murky water and get back into something that's a little more calm for you. Uh, divorce. It's unfortunate, uh, but obviously in the United States, you can look up the statistics yourself. 
divorces happen and at a much higher rate than, than we all may want to admit. Uh, therefore, you know, if there's a divorce in, under the, in the home, uh, one spouse may be keeping the house or the other, or they may both agree to just sell and move on. And in that example, if you choose to sell and move on, you know, they need, you know, all of a sudden you got people living under one roof and now they need to go buy, well, they're going to buy a roof for each. So you sell, sell one, you're going to buy two. Uh, so we see that quite a bit. Uh, getting married, just the flip. So getting married, you got two people living in two different households. They're going to marry and, and join hands and live under one household. Uh, so young families getting started, uh, or middle-aged, you know, it doesn't have to be just young people getting married, but anybody getting married, we'll just leave it at that, uh, and combining the household. They may, you know, I've seen this where it's their second marriage, and, and uh, neither one of them want to live where the other one did because of some previous, um, they don't want to be living up to the previous spouse or whatever, they just want a fresh start. So they, they sell two, buy one. Uh, and then the last one I have on my list is avoiding foreclosure. Uh, this one ties directly into the debt consolidation conversation and or possibly the, the change in job status or medical, you know, if you had a medical uh, debt of some kind surface that needs to get handled, um, tax consult, you know, tax debts, they, we sometimes see that. Um, anyway, some of these are unfortunate circumstances that arise. Uh, some of them are predictable, some of them are not. Uh, but in conclusion, these are all probably my top reasons or top things that I see in the marketplace why some you may see somebody choosing to sell and buy at the same time in these higher interest rate environments. And you know very very good and well that um, they're letting go of their lower interest rate that was fixed on a you know a 15 or 20 or 30 year mortgage um, and they're going to be paying a you know or receiving a, a much higher interest rate on their new mortgage with a new amortization. Um, it's just part of the life cycle I guess if you will. So anyway hope this helps and maybe you find yourself in this situation uh, all of which you should reach out and talk to us and see you know talk about your goals and objectives and what's happening in your world and uh, see what the best solution really is for you. Uh, again, I'm Jason Walker, and uh, feel free to reach out to us anytime, and thanks for being a subscriber. Talk to you later.